much for coming. It's so, so, so good to see everyone here tonight. It just really blesses our heart. Your energy, your spirit in the room, just, it's just awesome. I think we have a good word for you, too. I hope that it's something fresh for you. It sounds like an old topic that you already know a lot about. We're going to talk a little bit about Christian community tonight, and you're sitting here, so I'm obviously preaching to the choir. But I do hope that there's something in this lesson that's going to give you a little bit of fresh inspiration tonight. Uh, before we do that, um, I'd just like to introduce myself again. I'm Lily Taylor. This is my husband, Skip. We're teaching uh, from a book that we wrote called Unconfined, and hopefully many of you have had a chance to, to get to chapter 62, because we're going we're gonna to have a quiz over it tonight. <laughs> no, actually, we're going to, I want to do a quick recap. Uh, this, there's a slide that will show you what we've studied so far. These, we're calling them pillars because these are principles that we finally inculcated into our life during a very long and dark season. When you are, when you are looking for God to give you support and help, there are several, there's so many things that the Bible will support you with, but we talked about the fact that your family is from God. Your family is a gift from God. And if he designed it, he can fix it. We talked about the fact that dark seasons have a tendency to want to steal your joy, but Christians know, Christians have special ability to stay joy-filled. And last week we talked a lot about prayer, and we had a special time of prayer. It was such a blessing. I hope that it really blessed and energized you. And I think that's why we're seeing such a harvest at this church, is the prayer life that the believers here have. But tonight we're going to talk about some special things that the Bible says about Christian community and, and you being here, it is a big deal. It's a bigger deal than you may even know. And I chose a scripture uh, that's kind of a key scripture for tonight, and it's one that all of us know. You could probably quote it in your sleep. Proverbs 3, 4, and 5 says, Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God, and he will make your path straight. Have you ever had a time in your life where you didn't know what to do next? Where, where was that path going to lead you? How do you not lean on your own understanding if you're alone, if you're mostly looking to yourself for guidance? And God may have given you a lot of education and a lot of training, but let me tell you, you can have, you're going to get a lot more out of wise counsel than you are from just looking at your own insights. So uh, as we have been doing in the past few weeks, we're going to go back in time and tell you a quick story, then we'll unpack a principle, and then we'll go talk about it together. The story that I wanted to share um, is teed up in chapter 46 of the book. Skip is invited to serve at a children's facility called Meadow Creek. And just to tell you a little bit more about that, Meadow Creek is a really neat concept. It's kind of a private public partnership with a 501c3 charity running a children's home, basically an orphanage, if you will, but it's also supported by state funding from Child Protective Services. At any one given time, there's always about at least 100 children there from age 5 to 18. So it's a lot of children from, they've been removed from their home because their parents are either dead, incarcerated, or ill and unable to care for them. For some reason, Child Protective Services has removed them from their home. So one day, our life group was encouraged to consider uh, serving there, and one of the people in our group was very eager to do it. She, uh, I shouldn't say she, because I don't want to give it away in case she sees this video. This person said, oh, we really should do that. That's a fantastic thing for us to do as a group. And Chris, inside, we're thinking, okay, that sounds like a lot of work. Um, and it, just to make you laugh, it's kind of funny that we ended up doing this. It was a big part of our life. And as far as I know, the person who started it all never even served. <laughs> but uh, she would play an important role in, in having this happen because uh, she was very excited about it. And we all decided, well, okay, let's learn some more about it. The first thing we learned is that you don't just go and serve at one of these types of facilities. You have to have training. You have to have a background check. As soon as we learned that, I started getting fearful. I started getting, feeling shame working on me. What if I do the background check and they won't let me serve? They find out that our son's in prison and now I can't go and everyone in our life group will know that you know, just that badge of shame that the evil one wants to put on you was working on me powerfully. 
and I wanted to say no. Skip actually got more, more into it faster. In the book, I, I made it sound like he resisted it for a long time, but it was, very, it, was, it was a pretty short period of time that he decided we should try this. So we filled out the application. Unfortunately, we weren't turned down. Uh, we went to do the training. The training is, in and of itself is very heart-wrenching because of these children, some of them have been sexually abused, so you can't hug them. You really want to hug them. You arrive on night number one and somebody comes in the room and a 14-year-old is covered with bruises. The first thing you want to do is just grab them and hug them, but you're not allowed to do that. But it was such a powerful, wonderful, amazing experience. Have you ever gone somewhere and signed up to do some volunteer work and thought, oh, I just, I need to go because those people need me. And then you go and you find out that you're the one that receives the blessing. And, and that's really what happened with this kind of service. We went, we served, we, we adopted a cabin. And one young man who really made an impression on me, I called him Jonathan in the story. He had, he was in ROTC, he was getting good grades. Despite his terrible upbringing and the fact that he's living in an orphanage, he was really excelling in school. He was so bright, and we just, our hearts were just drawn to him. And uh, I, I won't tell you all the story in this central teaching time. Skip can tell it later. I can tell it later in the Q&A time. But some, some powerful things happened. Just our, our longing to help him made us realize that we still had the ability to be good parents. We still had something to offer even if our own child was away from us at that moment and unable to receive any kind of help or sucker or much, much hope from us, we still had something powerful to give and we wanted to do it. Um, and then if you, got to, if you got to chapter 62, you read the part about where Skip is trying to visit Stephen in prison. It's turned away. There's no explanation. There's no information. Stephen's name was taken off the website, so we had no idea what was happening to him. And that was a moment when that card from Jonathan fell out of the briefcase, and it was, do you ever just have one of those moments, just, just such a God hint? Like Pastor, Pastor Bill calls them God hints, or maybe a God hug, right when you need it the most. Someone sends you a text, or someone just reaches out to you, or you see a sign that you feel like God is telling you, I know this is, awful. This is terrible, but I'm still in control. I'm still moving mountains in the unseen realm. So I hope you enjoyed that part of the story, those little bits that were woven into the story about Meadow Creek. It was a very, very, very powerful experience for us to start serving again, because I'll be honest with you, during that season, I had I'd become a little bit disengaged in church. I was still going. I was still giving. But I wasn't connecting with the body of Christ like I'm going to suggest to you that we need to be doing. I, I, I included a scripture uh, from 1 Corinthians 12. In this scripture, Paul is talking about spiritual gifts. I think it's important for us to be reminded, did you know that you have special spiritual gifts? Maybe you've done a spiritual gift inventory at, at this church or some other church. God has literally given you something special to use for the service of the kingdom. It's a special gift that he wants you to use in your church. So if you're not plugged in and using it somewhere, you're wasting a special gift from God. And when I came across this scripture, I don't know, it just touched me at some point, and I realized I need to re-engage. And that service at Meadow Creek with our life group, minus the one person who really championed it, <laughs> made me really really realized the, the truth of the body of Christ. And I just love this particular scripture. It reads, uh, this, meaning these spiritual gifts, makes harmony among the members so that all of the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is part of it. I don't know if you've spent time thinking about that lately, but... This is a very special gift to you to be part of the body. And if you're not nurturing it, it's, you're just wasting something that God wants to give you to, to refresh you. And I'm going to suggest that it is refreshing. Although this next slide I'm going to put up there, you're probably going to think, oh, Lily. <laughs> you know, I'm here. I'm already coming to Tuesday night. I come on Sunday morning. I volunteer at Westside. I, I recognize a lot of faces in this room as very generous servers already. 
And the, the four things we're going to talk about just a little bit in our Q&A time, for really participating in church. I don't know about you guys, but during the pandemic, at the beginning of the pandemic, we were all watching church online. And Skip and I started calling up the couch campus. And we loved the couch campus because we just roll out there in our PJs, you know, we talked about it a lot. There was some great things about the couch campus. But there's nothing quite like being in corporate worship. We could not recreate the worship moments that we have here in this building in our living room. Trust me, you wouldn't have wanted to hear that at all. Uh, so these are some of the topics we're going to talk about in a minute. So right now you're probably thinking, when do I have time for that? I don't know about not everybody in the room has a different is a different part of life, but I'm still working. I'm at the like like the most busiest part of my career, I think. I've never worked this hard. I've worked at least 50, 60 hours a week some weeks. And then we have doctors, lawyers, insurance owners, business owners in this room. Business owners work all the time. Uh, so it's very hard when you're working and you have a family. But I don't know if you've ever thought about this concept of this perfect wheel of life. We have this idea in our heads that our life should be in balance. And I think that in the, in the Garden of Eden, uh, and you'll see this pie chart that I made, uh, I think in the Garden of Eden, our lives were in balance. They had health. They had each other. They had God. They walked with him every day. They had a vocation. They were told to uh, care for the animals and the plants that God had given them. And, and God does give us a certain amount of emotional energy to fuel our battery to do the things we need to do every day, to love our spouse, to love him. But when you get something going on in your life that skews the balance. This is what my life felt like, <laughs> at least, I don't know, I could have made an even bigger pie wedge for uh, family, because I was devoting so much emotional energy. I don't even know if you can see that. It's, can you see that thing? Um, it's real small on the slide in the back of the room that I look at. <laughs> I need that big one. Uh, so when you have something that's out of balance in your life, maybe it's your health, maybe it's your finances, if it's not in the balance that you, the way you'd imagine it to be, sometimes you spend a lot of energy worrying about it. Or it needs a lot of energy because a broken child might need you to fix their problem, take them to doctors, solve financial issues. When you're, when you're doing that, your life feels totally skewed. So I don't, somebody's probably gonna use this tonight when they go home and their spouse is gonna say, hey, I need you to take out the trash. I'm sorry, my, my pie chart is skewed right now. I can't, I can't do that. Because I've got something that I'm worried about. But hopefully that's not you. Hopefully this, hopefully your life never looks like this. But have you ever been through a time in your life when something was skewing you? Yes. <laughs> I hope I'm pronouncing that accurately so it doesn't feel like that. Um, but let me tell you something. The one wedge, we'll call it a pie wedge, and I learned this in another Christian teaching that I, that I undertook. The one wedge that does not skew the rest of the pie is your spiritual connection to God. It actually, and I couldn't find a way to, to describe what I wanted to say, so I made another pie chart, and hopefully it gives you a, an image, a good image. He makes your, and it's supposed to say God there in the middle, <laughs> not goo. He makes your pie bigger. He is in charge of time. He invented time. And he wants to connect with you, and when you are connected to him, everything else has room, somehow your finances, your health, your family, it, it just has room to, to grow in your life. And so you need to stay connected with the body, this body of Christ. I have another beautiful scripture I want to share with you about the fact that you need to stay planted. This is another famous one that most of you probably know uh, from Psalm 92. It reads, the godly will flourish and grow strong for they are planted in the house of the Lord. Planted gives you the image that you are growing, right? You're invested. You've got soil. You've got something. You're not just a fly-by-night tumbleweed <laughs> going by. You're, you're invested in that spot. And you know what I love about this particular verse is um, I read it again recently, and I noticed a new verse that never meant anything to me right afterwards, but now that I'm getting gray hair, it says, and as you get older, you will still bear fruit. <laughs> Amen. I want to be like Moses. I want to still bear fruit, even as I get older and older, I hope. But you, if you are separating yourself, like I did for just a little while, from the church, where I disengaged and I wasn't really receiving the, the beautiful connectedness that you have from being part of the body of Christ, you tend to be easier to pick off. 
then it's easier for Satan to convince you of his ridiculous lies because you're not being taught every Sunday, every Tuesday night, every Wednesday morning on your podcast or whatever you're using to keep God in your life every day, you're easier to control. So this is very important. I want to commend you for being here tonight. Um, I want to give you two words of caution, though, before we break up. There's two things that kind of were on my heart this week that I felt like the Holy Spirit was really encouraging me to share with you. And one of them is that, you know, God is perfect. People are flawed. <laughs> so even though I'm encouraging you to, to get your energy from and get your tank filled from serving, being part of the body of Christ, occasionally people are still going to let you down. Even people you love as much as your fellow believers and churchmates. We're going to have some differences. Someone might show up in a shirt that has a slogan on it that you don't like. Somebody might post something on Facebook that you don't like. Somebody might group up with a group that you feel left out of. You know, I, I, don't, I don't see that happening. I'm not, I'm, not pre I'm not preaching at all. I'm teaching. But I'm not sharing this with you tonight because I think it's happening. I'm sharing this with you tonight because it's on my heart. There, there is nothing more precious to the Lord than the unity of his believers. That's why he tells us so often what we studied last week, to pray together. And thank you for everybody that was so brave to pray together, even a few of you that aren't used to doing that, and you still did it, and it blessed us. Because he loves when his children are unified. Your hope is in Christ, not in the people in these seats, but we are here to help each other. Even though we're here to help each other, we're still going to ruffle each other's feathers every now and then. So I would just ask you to make sure you always give your life group members and your church members and your pastors a, a lot of grace. The same amount of grace that Jesus gave you when he died for you. Right? Because <laughs> we, we are flawed, but God is perfect. And, and so I'll just leave you with the idea that we need to be in unity of the Spirit because just like we talked about on night one, we talked about the fact that Satan is after your family. He wants to destroy your family. That's why a lot of us in this room are talking about and sharing things that have happened to us that were hard on our family. He wants to see that happen because that's one of his, one of his good tools. He would love to see your church fall apart, your life group fall apart, your marriage fall apart. He's anti-unity, but Jesus is for unity. That's why he tells us, this is another beautiful scripture from the Psalms. It says, how good and pleasant is it when brothers live in unity, for there the Lord commands a blessing. Would you like some blessing in your life? <laughs> well, let's just make sure we think about that a little bit this week, that we're, we're really walking in unity with our other believers. Just a special thought that came to me this week. If, if I would never want to offend anybody in this room. I'll just share a fun, I think it's a funny story with you. I, hope, I don't know if anybody in here is from California. But um, my sister posted a post the other day on Facebook, and I liked it because I thought it was hilarious. Texans often make jokes about how we hope Californians won't move here, right? And so I don't know why that's funny even, but it, it tickled me, and I liked it. And someone that I don't even know very well wrote to me through Facebook and said, I'm unfriending you. How could you like that post? That was so insensitive. And it totally broke my heart. Because I try very hard not to be political. I try very hard not to say things that might offend because I want my witness to shine greater than my personal convictions about anything else in my life. So just the fact that he unfriended me made me feel horrible. And I would never want to hurt anyone in this room. But if you hang out with me long enough, I'm going to. <laughs> we're all boneheads at some point. And we'll talk about that. I hope you won't miss next week. Next week's the final week, and we're going to talk about leaving the light on the path because we learned some specific things about how to try to love your adult children that we're going to talk about in that session. We are not getting it right. And we'll be honest with you next week when we talk about something that happened this week. Here we are every week talking to you about unity and prayer and God, how the, you know, families can be reunited. And we still had a blow-up that was very unpleasant. So we'll talk about that next time, not tonight. But let's just close for tonight um, with a, just a quick prayer on my heart. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for every person that's in this room. Thank you for their bravery last week to pray. Thank you for their committedness to you that shows up by them being here. And thank you for the unity of the Spirit that's in this room. 
Father, I confess that if I said anything to hurt a brother or sister, I am sorry. I'm sorry to them and I'm sorry to you. And Father, I just pray that if anybody in this room has an offense, that they will go and seek out our amazing Pastor Chad or Pastor Matt or Amber and let them help them through that circumstance so that none of us ever disturbs the unity of the body that you want to have here. And I just pray, Father, for all those people that will walk through the doors of this church next Sunday and all the Sundays to come that you give us. I pray that they would feel a special unity and that they would feel welcome in the body of Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.